Hello, friend, and welcome back to more Democracy 4. So we are the United States right now. We are a few months into our term so far, and everyone is uh, starting to hate us a little bit less. So here are the current voting intentions. About 50% of the country is willing to vote for us at this time. Uh, disposable income. This is kind of cool. This actually shows you, I think, where everyone's income was before you took office and then after all of your po your policies have been in place. So basically, we've made everyone poorer. <laughs> so we've increased certain taxes. You can kind of see, and these are actually really cool stats here. So original income was 80,000. Does this mean they, they're down to 23,000 right now? Oh my gosh, that's awful. Who are we? We're horrible people. Food price is being reduced, uh, or sorry, is taking away money. Food price, private health care, private schools, income taxes. God, that's crazy. That's so cool though. I love that you can kind of dig down into those numbers. So where do we stand on this health crisis? The doctor strike took a nosedive, but then it's going back up again. We need to free up some more bunny, uh, some more bunny, some more bunnies in the budget. We need to free up some more money in the budget. Um, the overall global economy is up. Our GDP just took an increase over the last quarter. So where can we start to cut some corners? Now, state schools, I really don't want to pull out of state pensions. Now, state pensions, that is a pretty big uh, expenditure here. What would happen just for fun? What would happen if we rip away everyone's pension? So if we cut this by, say, $50 billion, what is this going to do? Uh, so first off, it's going to make the capitalists a little bit less grumpy. It's going to piss off the retired people in the country by apparently not that much. Uh, it will make the poor a little bit grumpy. And it will reduce, it will increase the poverty rate. Yeah, because this was actually helping people not be as poor. This is going to make them a little bit more poor because it's not giving people money once they get older. It will reduce the membership of retired. Or sorry, it will, yeah, it will reduce the membership of retired because people are working longer to make more money and it will reduce the retired income. Uh, socialism is barely affected. Generational wealth gap is interesting. It reduces that. And private pensions overall will be reduced as well. So we're going to go ahead and apply this change. What's the worst that can happen? We piss off a bunch of old folks. Uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. We need to free up that money and we need it yesterday. What else can we cut? It's cutting time. I've got a pair of scissors and I'm not afraid to use it. So we just cut like 50 billion out of pensions. I think we're going to come back and chop a little bit more out of military spending. The, uh, the delay, the inertia of changing military spending is starting to finally come to fruition. So I think we're pretty much got all of the, the money out of the military that we can. How are the Patriots feeling about us right now? Uh, the Patriots are a very important group. Wow, surprisingly very high. Their influence right now, their happiness is pretty strong. We have citizenship, uh, citizenship tests, border controls. Our firearm laws, of course, are very lax. Space program, it's like, heck yeah, America's got rockets. Uh, death penalty, everyone likes a good death penalty. Private industry for the space industry is helping out as well. Interesting stuff. Now you can see their happiness is on an overall decline and it is commiserate with how the military is. Yeah, here we go. You can see as we start to reduce the funding of the military spending, they're going to get more and more grumpy. Patriots, by the way, can be super awful because they can come up out of nowhere and pop you in government. So we got to be really, really careful about that. Um, and by pop you in government, I mean literally assassinate your character. Uh, where are we at in the terms of the healthcare problem? Doctors are still at strike. Hospital overcrowding is still really, really high. We need to worry about or fix this problem with our healthcare situation. Healthcare demand, of course, has risen up because of the deadly virus outbreak. I don't know if this is a timing thing. Maybe it lasts for X amount of turns. I don't see it as an event. So I don't think it's a trigger stop or a stop or start thing. Respiratory disease. Everyone's got asthma. <laughs> Welcome to my world. You all have asthma. Deal with it. Uh, let's throw a bone over to our capitalists and uh, make a trade council. This is going to make 53% of the folks happier with us. Oh, Trade Council, I'm sorry. Trade Council actually impacts our foreign relations. So yeah, let's bring some more international trade. Why not? End our turn, see where things are. Hey, alcohol abuse and gridlock. Both of these events are gone. So these are no longer negatively affecting our country. GDP is up, health is up, education is up. We are increasing poverty. Crime is almost at a nil and unemployment is going down. Well, everything's looking good in the US of A right now. We have a surplus of $58 billion because we basically have completely killed your social security. The global GDP is up and our national team won the World Cup. How about that? Patriots are happy because we do love our soccer teams. Wait, do we? 
I don't think we do. What else do we have? Antisocial behavior. That's about to go down in a trigger, which is great. We are starting to combat the fake news out there through our state broadcaster. What else is worrying about? We've got a GDP going up. Yeah, things are good. Looking up a little bit. We've got to start paying down this debt because the more we pay down the debt, the more we free up uh, extra money, right? We're paying, we're paying down our debt interest, basically. So the, the less we pay in debt, um, the more that money then gets to be reinvested into the economy. That's a free hundred billion dollars. If we start paying down our debt, that's another 106 billion we can put elsewhere. So I think the focus right now should be continuing to invest back into healthcare. Let's see if there's any new welfare healthcare type of programs here. We've got a lot of public services. Public libraries, I think, would increase the education overall, which isn't bad. State water, university grants. Some of these are pretty big. University grants would be a big program. It would greatly increase our overall, ooh, teacher strike. Wait, do we have a teacher strike going on too? This is a doctor strike, right? Please tell me we don't have a teacher strike and I haven't been noticing that. No, I don't think we have a teacher strike. But if we did put university grants out there, I think if there was a teacher strike, it would reduce the teacher strike. That's why it's there. Um, skill shortage. We do have that skill shortage. So it would reduce the skill shortage issue because we are paying for people basically to go to college. Uh, it would cost anywhere from 1 billion. Probably we'll land at about 6 billion on this one. Let's go ahead and do university grants. Let's start this off. At the first initial level, it's going to sit at 12 billion. That's going to make education better. State employees will be happier. Parents and youth will be happier. Uh, more people are going to be joining as members of or identifying themselves as socialists. Uh, more people will join the government so they will become state employees. And the generational wealth gap will be reduced. This is a, a level or measure of equality, I think, in your country. That's not too bad. That's an overall pretty positive change for a cool 12 billion. Hey, build a wall. Where did I just see a, a wall at? Long, I saw it somewhere. <laughs> you can, in fact, build a wall. And we might have to eventually have some pretty harsh restrictions on immigration because it can pretty negatively impact your GDP. Uh, let's see. Business startups. Let's let, let more people become self-employed. We are pulling away from the capitalist group. We are making, sorry, the socialist group. And we are making capitalists happier. That's fine with me. In fact, let's go ahead and do a pretty big investment here. Why not? Live the American dream. Open up your own YouTube management company. Open up your own Etsy shop. You too, my friends, can own your own business. Uh, City Farms, National Business Council, plastic bag, health food subsidies. You know, health food subsidies are probably going to be better than a, um, call it a fat tax, basically, where you're targeting junk food. So why don't we pay people, or we, we're paying subsidies, we're paying uh, to lower the overall price of health food, right? Of plants and vegetables and stuff like plants and vegetables, of fruits and vegetables and things like that. Now, this is going to greatly increase plant-based diets. Let's go see what that does. So huge steps in reducing obesity. What a great investment there. But let's go ahead and track down plant-based diet. Where did that go to? Uh, and I have to go hunt it down a little bit. I think you can search somewhere. I guess not. Okay, there's health food subsidies. There's plant-based diets up here. Um, so it is increasing or it's, it's, it's reducing CO2 emissions. It is in, oh, sorry, plant-based diets is influenced by the food standards agency, food price, health food subsidies, and it's reducing CO2 emissions. I think it's reducing CO2 emissions, right? Because we're not using, we're not trying to get as much cattle. Clean energy subsidies. Uh, yeah, plant-based diet. So very mi minusculely reducing carbon emissions. So sure, eat more fruits and vegetables, help the environment. It's a win-win-win, right? Next quarter, new Marty, or sorry, new major party donor. Your fundraising efforts have managed to attract a new wealthy individual with bags of money. Uh, oil drip drilling opportunity. I think we're going to go ahead and allow the drilling. Again, I'm trying to balance and keep the capitalists happy. And we're doing this balancing act. So every, every so often, we're going to throw them a bone and give them a bit of a bonus. So we are making the environmentalists a little bit grumpy. However, we are really heavily investing in the environment right now. We are going to get them back. We're going to win back those environmentalist voters through things like healthy eating or, or, or tidy up the campaign. In fact, I tell you what, we just pissed off the environment of uh, the environmentalists. Let's go ahead and go into public services or I think it's under here. Is it not? Where's my reforestation campaign? Here we go. We'll go ahead and start planting some trees. Sorry about that, guys. I know we pissed you off. 
We're going to plant some trees. Hey, unemployment reduction, reduction in CO2, pollution, and respiratory disease for a low, low price of $4 billion? Absolutely. Why not? Look at that beautiful surplus, by the way. $90 billion. I was going to snip the military spending again. Um, this is light defensive. Let's go down... Let's go down another notch or two. Just a little more trimming off the top for military spending. Awesome stuff. What about antisocial behavior? This is about to stop, which is great. Overall crime, by the way, is down. I think this is going to be just normal crime. So crime is almost at the lowest point it's ever been due to community policing, due to uh, people drinking less, and, and I guess the overall GDP and making life better. Sure, why not? Uh, whatever. We're, everyone's happy with us, right? Um, we could also look at legalizing drugs. Now, legalizing drugs does cost money. Where the heck did it go? I thought it was under this little symbol here. Where is my legal drug consumption narcotics? Here it is. So we, right now, legalized can, uh, cannabis. Now, if we tax weed, have we? do we already have a tax on marijuana right now? Recreational drugs tax. That would bring in anywhere from uh, 0 million to 14.4 billion. So yes, absolutely. Why do we legalize marijuana? So we can tax marijuana. Absolutely. We're going to go ahead and do that. We'll only take about $5 billion. It's a, a pretty low tax. Pretty low tax on drugs. So we'll go ahead and do that. Down the road, we might kind of uh, free this up for maybe LSD. Probably not heroin. Because that's, a, that's going a little bit too far. And it will cause some pretty massive problems down the road. Legal drug consumption, once it hits higher points, will cause major issues. So we want to be a little bit careful about how crazy... We go on the legalization front. Motorists are still grumpy. Parents are not too happy with us because doctors are striking. Hospitals are overcrowded. Can we go ahead and bump a little bit more money into our state health care? A little bit. It's a little bit at a time. This is going to be another 10 billion, 20 billion. We're going to go ahead and drop another 20 billion into our state run health care. Again, trying to just fix this entire down negative area in the corner here, right? So it's respiratory, obesity. Although this should take should have taken a massive hit. Man, obesity's hard. Quit giving me delicious food deals. Hey, private space industry. Oh no, people aren't quite investing in our private space industry. Does that mean SpaceX folded? Maybe SpaceX and Virgin Galactic both folded. Unemployment is down. Crime has been eliminated. We are now basically Singapore. We we walk the streets at 4 a.m. without fear of who we're going to run into. Global forecast is okay. Anti-social behavior is done. We get to appoint a UN ambassador. This is just a story thing. It doesn't actually have a long-term effect. Uh, so we will go ahead and choose someone who is uh, popular on the international stage. Pleasing the socialists, liberals, etc., etc. Who are we uh, pissing off right now? Motorists, parents. We've been there before. Can we do anything for parents right now? We're not, we're not terribly close to election yet. But we do want to keep parents happy. Child care provision. Uh, this is, wow, this is anywhere from 5 billion to 69 billion. This would increase productivity, compassionate, reduce our unemployment. More parents return to the workforce after having children. Distortion of the market, but it would be popular with parents. You know what? 37 billion to initiate this. Pretty massive boost to the productivity. Pretty good jump to socialists as well. Let's not do a ton. Let's just do about 20 billion or so in child care provisions. That should have a pretty decent trickle down. How are we doing in our health fight? God, we just cannot get a break on health care uh, and overcrowding. I think we might we need to hit health pretty hardcore in the next couple of turns. Let's go ahead and hit the next turn. Uh, flash crash. Automated trading has rendered the stock market so fragile that a large trade has sent stocks into a sudden spiral. So for this turn, the GDP has taken a massive blow and the wealthy are grumpy. Um, we are about to have cyberbullying. Nah, not really. That's a that's a pretty neutral problem. That's not really going up or down. We still have our small budget surplus of 35 billion. Let's look at healthcare, hardcore. What can we do right now to relieve the burden on our national hospitals? Um, anything related to health. Organ donation. This is kind of cool. Presumed consent. Universal with no opt-out. When you die, your organs are getting harvested. Obviously, this, this would piss off the religious front. However, this would greatly increase our health and our lifespan. Um, 
if approved, we're going to go with presumed consent. Somewhere along the presumed consent line. Seems pretty good. We'll try that out. What else can we do for public services? Public libraries would increase our education overall, which isn't bad. Healthcare vouchers. Now, healthcare vouchers, I believe this is where... Was this Obamacare? Was this healthcare vouchers? Because you are... Are you getting paid... You're getting insurance at a lower rate to go to private health care. This lets, this lets you go to private health care, not public health care. But at the, at the end of the day, it still would help our overall health situation, but it would cost so much money. We can't really afford to do that just yet. I, I really want to hang on to the surplus if I can. Free school meals would be a pretty good deal. Lowering our obesity epidemic. Not too much money to invest into. It would reduce poverty and increase health. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and allow free school lunch meals. Um, 4.7 billion and a pretty strong reduction in poverty and obesity seems worth it to me. And you know what? Just as a, a nod to the parents out there, we're going to provide free parenting classes. Here's how to be a parent. Don't treat your, uh, don't treat your kid like a puppy. You can't smack him with a newspaper. Yeah, sure you can. We don't care. Do whatever you want. Uh, but that should make the parents a little bit happier. We are seven turns away from our first re-election campaign. And 88% of the country thinks we are doing a solid job. As you can see, we are starting to lean way more towards the socialist liberal side of the world. So we're, we're moving away from Ayn Rand and towards Bernie Sanders. That is our transformation in office. Next time around, we have uncompetitive economy. This is great. So now our economy is back to being competitive again. This was a pretty nasty one. So that means that we should, our GDP overall should have bounced up. Uh, wow, look at that spike. I think that might have been from the uncompetitive economy going away. That was massive. DNA database. So this is basically police chiefs are, are requesting that they are allowed to build up a global database. We're going to say criminals only. You can only have a database of known criminals. Budget, we are down $67 billion. Oof, man. Wow, everything hit at one time there, didn't it? Everyone's still pretty happy with us. Man, this healthcare thing, though, is just not going away. What went up again? God, Dr. Strike went back up. What are you all grumpy about? Wages, trade unionist. I think wages, I think wages will follow the GDP. So the GDP bounced up. So did the wages. So did, I guess, the doctor strike. Ugh. Intensity over time. It costs us 1.3 billion. Interesting. Uh, obesity. We have taken a big chunk out of obesity. We're 67 billion in debt, though. We really need to get this health thing in the bud. I think at this point, though, if the, if the, uh, pandemic were to go away we would be back to normal i don't know when it goes away maybe it has a, a shelf life of like seven or eight turns or something uh what else can we do for public services free eye tests this would increase the health a little bit so we'll go ahead and allow free eye tests for everyone what about healthcare vouchers again that's a little bit too expensive for us adult education would help out with education food labeling all foods must now display all ingredients and additives making it easier for people to choose a food they want to eat. It would cost $1 billion and, again, drive people towards plant-based diets. But, again, any bit that can help with the health problem, I think I'm going to go ahead and go into. So, reducing obesity again, driving people towards health-based diets or plant-based diets. What? How can we, how else can we take a chunk out of this thing? Hospital overcrowding. Healthcare demand is, in, is causing this. However, healthcare, healthcare demand is going down because people are just generally healthier, I believe. So yeah, our overall health is going up. So that's actually negatively impacting the demand on our healthcare system. So the more we fix our health, the better that downstream system will be. Look how, look how negative the doctor strike is. If we can eliminate obesity, that's a massive chunk out of health. So let's focus on obesity then. We've got... What's, what's some positives here? Food price, GDP, and car usage. What's affecting the food price? Food price is getting cheaper and cheaper. Okay, currency strength, oil prices. Is there anything that can increase the cost of food? We'll have to bounce on that next turn. Let's go ahead and go over there. We're only about five or six turns away. I think this episode, I'll, I'll go ahead and go to the election. And we'll see what comes up after the election. Hey, pollution is done. There's no more pollution. It's all gone. <laughs> everyone's everyone's fine uh, the GDP has improved health has improved political situation or sorry foreign policy 
uh, representatives from oil companies are interested in us going to the Middle East to take their oil. We're not going to deploy troops. We're not going to act as a policing force. We probably can't afford it anyways. This is going to reduce our oil supply. However, can I see what our oil supply is? If I go over car usage, um, looking for oil demand. Here's oil demand. Yeah, it's, it's relatively been staying the same. So I don't think we're going to be in danger of running out of oil at any time soon. Free eye test. Let's take a look at that obesity thing again. Okay, so we are coming down a bit on obesity. What looks like obesity to you? Stem cell research? Yes. Ban private education. Awesome. <laughs> State run schools. You can basically nationalize, by the way, the more, um, the more socialist you start to get, you actually will unlock more policy ideas that are, I think they're locked behind a certain level of your country being in, in a certain direction. Uh, so the more conservative you get, the more fun law and order types of items you get. Rubber bullets, secret courts, wiretapping, torture usage, um, all sorts of fun stuff. Detention without trial. We haven't done anything with the law and order system, and I really want to try it out at some point. Really keep our citizens under uh, lock and key. National anthems, public libraries, again, anything focused on health for kids. Youth club. Uh, youth club is about reducing cyberbullying, antisocial behavior. That's kind of a trickle down to youth. But I really am focused on health and obesity. That is what we're trying to do. I think we've got all of our possible programs in play that aren't going to break the bank. Let's go ahead and invest in some public libraries. Uh, we have a surplus again of $49 billion. So let's put a little bit of money towards increasing the education of our country. Yeah, how else can we fix this obesity problem? Let's go ahead and hover over obesity to see just visually really quick. I love this, by the way. So helpful just to hover over something to see immediately what's affecting that. I think it just might be a time-based thing. Overall, as our health gets better, we're going to be less overweight. Regional war has broken out in a neighboring country. We're going to pretend that Canada has decided to uh, attack Quebec. Quebec finally declared its independence and the rest of Canada is forming an aggressive front and they're going to take those Quebecois and show them what for. Unemployment is going back up again. Okay. And the GDP is kind of stalling out. Uh, situation imminent. We're going to have pollution on our hands. You don't say. What was this? I took a massive nosedive a couple turns ago. Can we hold the, can we hold the uh, environmental issue off somehow? Carbon capture and storage. This would heavily reduce CO2 emissions. Antibiotics. Would this reduce... Antibiotic span would increase the food price, would reduce antibiotic resistant bacteria. I don't think this is going to relate to our current pandemic, though. Tax shelters, rare earth mining, quantitative easing, quantitative form of unconventional monetary policy where central banks. Oh, it's just printing extra money. Fair enough. Um, we could try to invest in a Mars program. Green electronics, government subsidies. Boy, I don't know which route to go down right now. We were really just not quite able. Oh, here we go. I didn't quite think about fighting the obesity problem with taxes. This is the fat tax. This is where we're, it's a punitive tax, basically, on unhealthy foods. I think we're going to do it a little bit. Look at how much that's going to kill the obesity epidemic. Let's just do, um, let's do a 22%. Or so, 24% tax on junk food. I would be so grumpy if I had to pay a 24% tax on my Burger King or something. How dare you take my Taco Bell away from me? I would hate my own government. <laughs> uh, we've got different taxes for mansions here. We're not really trolling for money at the moment. We'd make a lot of money off these, but we would start to piss off a lot of the wealthy elites in the country. And brain drain would become a big problem. Brain drain basically is a situation... Uh, where the wealthiest, I wouldn't say wealthiest, the, the most knowledgeable who tend to lean wealthy would start to leave your country because you're, they're just basically being punished for being rich. So we probably won't go down that route directly. Let's go ahead and implement uh, medium, sorry, diplomatic service for foreign relations. Just a small aside. I mean, do we even have to say this? I don't think in our country we have any issues with this, but let's go ahead and just say a, uh, yeah, I mean, as a, as a, a statement of, of, uh, international solidarity. We are going to ban female genital mutilation. That kind of goes without saying in our country. 
what else do we have stamp out racism we don't really have too much too many issues again with racial um racial problems even though there kind of is in real life bus subsidies here we can come back to this high speed rail thing we do have a 65 billion surplus right now do we want to try to start investing in high speed rail it will cost anywhere from 12 billion to 80 billion but it could greatly reduce unemployment increase everything that we want it's it's good all across the board for us it's just going to be very very expensive i'll tell you what we'll save that for our next quarter or for our next term cycling campaign wouldn't be bad that should also hit the obesity problem just a smidge uh congestion charging is kind of a uh a broad way of dealing with congestion in cities i think they can be yeah we, we went the right way by handling it with bus passes and stuff like that free bus passes bus usage retired poor earnings this would help out the poor the unemployed the retired quite a bit so let's go ahead and implement free bus passes uh, to those of retirement age. It's going to be expensive. It's only going to cost $4 billion or so, but it would be a pretty good across the board change, I think. So we're going to implement that. Uh, we are out of political power. Next turn, we have pollution again. Yay. And a toxic waste dump. We're going to say, do not build a waste dump. Not in my backyard. Nimby, nimby. Environmentalists are happy. We can start making a campaign speech. So here's kind of an interesting thing. Um, you can basically select up to four, yeah, four speech items that will make one group happy or another group angry. And then at the bottom, normally there's two groups that you can just make make happier. So we're going to say we're going to make the, the roads better. And boy, isn't our country flag beautiful. We're going to give a speech to make these folks happy. And this next step is really loud. So I'm going to skip it. Okay, so our speech is done. Patriots and commuters are both a little bit happier with us. I think if we take a look at the electioneering stuff, we should see that we're going to have no problem in the upcoming election. And honestly, so far, and, I, and again, they are balancing the game still. Uh, I wanted to show you mostly how the game operates in general, but overall, the balance is still a little bit off. It's really easy to get your country to be happy with you. I think the, the bigger challenges will come in the countries that are in dire straits. So especially uh, Democracy 3, I think, had a DLC for African nations. It was incredibly challenging, and I got killed quite frequently. So it's really challenging to manage those countries that are in more dire straits than a European Western nation. Um, motorists and parents, parents are still grumpy. God, if we cannot beat this dang obesity thing, I am going to resign. Oh, we're starting to get under the start trigger. So we have to go through the stop trigger in order to remove obesity. Hopefully that might then trickle through and overall help the health situation, which might reduce overcrowding, etc., etc. Man, we cannot win with this healthcare stuff, can we? Rent controls, antibiotic span. I'm trying to see if there's any little tiny bit that we could squeeze out. What about right to die? <laughs> oh, this is a fun one. So by allowing people to choose to die when they want, we would reduce the healthcare demand. Yes, <laughs> we're gonna do it. <laughs> it's not much, it's a sliver. Hey, you can end your life whenever you want. Obviously, that would make liberals incredibly happy. It would also drive a lot of people to liberalism. Now, I think it's it's liberal versus conservative. So we are pulling people from one or the other. Uh, if you have people joining the liberal side, I believe they would be leaving the liberal the the liberalism or sorry the conservative group uh, category. So I think families agreement would be fine. This would be seven points. It would obviously piss off conservatives. It would reduce healthcare demand by a bit. Look, desperate times, my friends, call for desperate measures. You know what's also interesting? We managed to keep all of our ministers so far. I normally have a problem where my ministers are really, really pissed off by now. Uh, who's grumpy? You're a, you're a liberal, liberal farmer. You are a trade unionist commuter. Your experience is going up, so it grows each turn. Yeah, there we go. They're still relatively happy with us. Budget surplus sitting at 52 billion. Fake news is still a problem. Can I go ahead and boost up the private, what's it called? Actually out of political power. I was thinking about the government TV, state-sponsored broadcaster. I don't know how else to turn this down. Fake news, stability, education, foreign relations. I guess higher education would allow people to understand that they're being fed fake news. Uh, question about fracking. We're going to go ahead and ban fracking. 
no fracking in my mountains here. Campaign speeches. I'm not even going to make any more speeches. I think we're fine. Cyberbullying. Eh, not really. That's still pretty, pretty calm. Health is up. Education, GDP, all good signs. Unemployment, by the way, still really, really high. Oh no. One of our ministers is grumpy. Why are you no longer loyal? You're a self-employed capitalist. Our capitalists grumpy with us. Religious are grumpy. That's a little bit scary. There are still quite a few people who consider themselves to be religious in our country. We can kind of skew that though by going over here to secularity of education and starting to lean pretty heavily into secular side. So we start to teach that there is no creationism, only evolution. So we <laughs> get them while they're young. So we're going to start at a young age. And as you can see, less people are going to join the religious group and we are going to get some other benefits. It's going to piss off the religious side though. So we got to be a little bit careful about that. In fact, we might alienate them really, really quick. Oh, is there anything we can do about that? <laughs> I don't know if we can. We're just going to have a bunch of super grumpy religious folks right now. Probably. Uh, pollution is back, of course. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to not have a pollution problem. There are some more steps we could take, I believe, in terms of reforestation. Maybe we could bump some more. Oh, no, it was the... Um, here it is. It is this uh, carbon capture and storage. This would pretty strongly reduce the CO2 emissions. In fact, what do we look at it at pollution? Um, well, obviously the environment is the biggest one. So what's negatively impacting the environment? Obviously our car usage. So if we were to invest in that massive monorail system, that might reduce both car and air travel. GDP is an overall negative. I mean, that's just more companies are making factories, more people are moving tractors, whatever it happens to be. Uh, what else could negatively impact that? Hmm. There's not a whole lot we can do about this right now, I don't think. We just have to keep trying to add more policies, I think, that, that improve the environment. So targeting you know, more taxes for carbon taxes and stuff like that, more, more pollution taxes and all that jazz. Um, our minister's going to leave. If he, if he's not, if his uh, demands aren't met. Self-employed people and capitalists. Base productivity. This is cool. This is a positive event. I don't know if I've talked about positive events too much, but you, just like you can have a bad event, you can have or a, a bad situation. You can have a good situation too. So we're extremely productive right now. So we're going to increase our GDP. More people are self-employed. Self-employed are making more money. So we're having a bit of a boom period for self-employment, which is nifty. Uh, we have a, a budget surplus of 89 billion. You know what? We're going to make a speech. Did I already go through and get elected? No, that is going to be one turn from now. So we can make electioneering. So here's the deal. What can I do? I can make a pledge. Human development raised by 50. GDP raised by 25. Equality raised by 50%. Um, I don't know if I can raise human development any, can I? I, I don't think we have room to, to raise it by 50%. So for the speeches though, I'm going to go ahead and, and again, focus on the commuters. And I think I'm going to focus on who was the other person that was grumpy. I'm going to focus on the capitalists a bit. We're going to try to target a speech at the capitalists and the commuters. And you know what? Can we get the religious folks as well? Or is there no room? I don't think we can actually do that. Wealthy, state employees, youth. None of our speeches can target the religious groups. Okay, so we'll just do our... Uh, commuter and our capitalist focused speech. Okay, so Marxists hate us and capitalists love us. Commuters are okay with us as well. Uh, fundraising. We are almost raising enough money. Wow, that's kind of surprising. We have, we're have we not quite making enough money or, or raising enough money as the Holy Justice Alliance. However, we are going to have a massive, massive voter turnout. This, I think, is still relatively new and being developed. I don't really interact with this too much, but with our pledge to commuters, can we, can we, can we start our new high-speed rail line? We can. We're going to go ahead and start this out. Uh, it's going to cost $45 billion to kick off. It's going to take 16 turns for this to actually fully be in development. That's what I was saying. It's almost better to, to almost do this on turn one, but it's all good in the end. This is going to drastically increase the opinion of commuters. Uh, reduced car usage, which is huge. Car usage reduction would have a massive impact, uh, trickle-down impact. We'll, we'll actually go ahead and invest $52 billion 
into our high speed rail. So there we go. I don't think I have to do anything else. Here comes our election. And survey says everyone loves the Justice League and the Holy Justice Alliance has a stupid name and no one likes them. All right, friends, this is pretty much it. I think I wanted to just show you the basics of Democracy 4. From here, as you can tell, it's just a matter of... Oh, we can reshuffle our cabinet. No, we keep everybody. We love them all. Uh, from here, basically, we would be able to continue doing the same thing. As you saw, though, so far, things are pretty smooth. So from here, I would probably just focus on keeping the surplus high, building or sorry, uh, breaking down the debt, trying to, to just trim up the last couple things here. Man, I never did beat obesity in uh, in our country and the healthcare situation. But as our GDP would improve, we get more surplus. We could keep reinvesting in our state healthcare, yada, yada, yada. And eventually at the end of the day, actually, wasn't there one more? Um, wasn't there under welfare or economy, universal basic income, public services. Where did I see healthcare vouchers? We could implement healthcare vouchers, for example, at a low, low cost of 63 billion. Good God. Um, but that would reduce poverty and stuff like that. Maybe that would help out with our overall healthcare situation. But this is pretty much it. I wanted to show you a quick preview of Democracy 4. And I hope this explains the game a little bit. It's, I love it. I, I It's a game that I play when I watch West Wing for whatever reason. But I think as they develop more countries, they give you more challenging starts and they really impact how things work together. And if you get into the development now, you help out on their discord, you can kind of influence and give them opinions on your country or tell them, you know, maybe this situation is more active in your country or maybe this policy should infect uh, or should impact, you know, this situation a little bit differently. But there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this set of videos. That was Democracy 4, again, available at Positex website. Not on Steam yet. They're still in early, again, early, early alpha. Please don't, you know, consider this to be a final product. They're going to be making changes. I just wanted to give you a quick peek. Thanks so much for watching, friends. As always, until next time, take care.